People all over this country, I have found in talking to them through talk radio, want smaller government. They want what we are offering, but they despair that it will never happen because so many people have become dependent upon government, and that is why the, the most important question in politics today is the most important question. Would you give up your favorite federal program if it meant you never had to pay taxes again? But there are ways of getting unwinding these other programs that the government has gotten us into. But we have to do it now. We can't put this off for four or eight years or 12 years thinking, well, maybe we can put up with Bob Dole for four years as long as it keeps Bill Clinton out of the White House. Or maybe we can put up with Bill Clinton as long as it keeps Bob Dole out of the White House. We need to do something about these things now before these uh, liabilities become overwhelming. And then the only way we can get out of them is with massive breaking of promises. And those promises are going to be uh, devastating when they are broken. It will mean that your parents who had depended upon Medicare will not have it when they go to the hospital. It will mean that when you retire, that retirement income will not be there that was promised to you. It means that when a bank fails, the deposit insurance will not have any money to pay you off. And the next time, the government may not be able to raise the taxes as they did with the savings and loan crisis. The time is rapidly approaching when we cannot extricate ourselves from all these liabilities. So we have to act now. And that is why I'm running for president, is because I do not see that we have 20 years to fiddle around with this, 20 years to listen to the politicians tell us at election time that they too are for smaller government, and then go back to Washington and pass a health care bill that will drive the health insurance companies out of the market in this country, pass a minimum wage law that will put uh, poor people out of work, uh, pass a welfare reform bill, which, like all the other reform bills, will make welfare bigger, more expensive, and more deeply involved in people's lives. We have to change this now, and we are going to change it. The most important question in, in uh, the political campaign today, I think, is whether these ideas will be heard. Will they be part of the national debate? And I think that the most important thing that you can do is to help me get into the presidential debates in October. Can you imagine what it would be like if someone on that national stage was confronting Bill Clinton with the idea of repealing the income tax and making him justify continue to take the money out of your paycheck every week? Can you imagine somebody confronting Bob Dole with the idea of getting the government completely out of Social Security and letting him explain that, well, he saved Social Security in 83 with a massive tax increase, and he can give you a massive tax increase in the future and make it all well again? Can you imagine these ideas being discussed? Well, they should be. We have finally reached the point in this country where people recognize that government doesn't work. People recognize that the answer is not to look under the hood and tinker with the engine, but rather to throw out the engine and replace it with a much smaller motor. That the time has come that we have to turn this around and send it in the other direction before it gets too late. The time has come, and we should not despair, because we are presenting the only program that provides the benefits of liberty to the American people. And those benefits are going to touch everyone. To old people, we say, Finally, your retirement will be safe, and your children and your grandchildren will have opportunities far beyond anything that you ever had in this country. To young people, we say, this will be the land of opportunity again, because we are going to repeal the income tax and the Social Security tax so that every dollar you make will be yours to spend, to save, to give away as you see fit. Uh, to people of all religions, we say, at last, you are going to be able to support your church, your favorite cause or charity in a way you've never been able to before because we are repealing the income tax and we are going to get the government out of your life. No longer will you have to fight these terrible fights over values because no longer will the government have the ability to impose somebody else's values upon you. As a matter of fact, whenever you try to impose morality by government, what you wind up doing is making moral decisions the province of politicians. And I don't know about you, but I do not consider Newt Gingrich, Jesse Helms, Teddy Kennedy, Richard Gephardt, Bob Dole, Bill Clinton as my moral superiors and people who can teach me something about how to live. Uh, to people in the inner cities, we say, take heart. Help is on the way. We are going to leave in the economy a trillion dollars a year that is currently being sucked out 
in income and social security taxes so that there will be jobs for everyone who can work and charity for those who can't. Uh, to people of all religions, to people of all colors, to people of all ages, we say we are going to make America a free country again. The blessings of liberty do touch everyone. But finally, let me put this on a more personal basis and how the blessings of liberty will touch you. This week, look at your paycheck. See what it is that the government is taking from you in income and social security taxes. And ask yourself, what are you going to do with that money when it is no longer drained away from you by the government and then doled back to you a little of it like you were a child on an allowance? What is it you're going to do with that money when we repeal the income tax? Will you put your child in a private school or a religious school where he can be taught the values you want him to learn? where you can get prayer or no prayer as you choose rather than the Board of Education or the Supreme Court or the Congress chooses, you'll have the resources to do it. Or will you set it aside for that business you've always wanted to go into? Or will you help your church or your cause, uh, your favorite cause or charity in a way that you've never been able to before? What will you do with that money? It is your money, and I swear to you, as President of the United States, I will not rest until that money is in your hands and everything you make is yours, until you have control over your own life again, until you have control over your own money and your own freedom, because this is supposed to be America. This is supposed to be the land of individual liberty, personal freedom, and freedom from government. And I swear to you, if the libertarians take power, if I am elected president, we will restore the country that our founding fathers had in mind. And then we will go to work from there to decide how to make it even freer yet. Mm -hmm.